So you may remember that two years ago, a stunning study came out giving the organic movement a big boost in its campaign against genetically modified foods or GMOs. Conducted by a team of French researchers and led by scientist Giles Eric Seralini, the study found that rats fed by Monsanto's Roundup Ready corn over the course of two years had increased levels of tumors and mortality compared to the control group of rats. Now, just take a look at one of the highly disturbing Frankenstein photos showing the rats that were fed GM corn. Now, the findings were published in the peer-reviewed scientific journal Food and Chemical Toxicology in September of 2012, but pretty much immediately after its publication, the Seralini study began to come under intense fire from Monsanto scientists. See, the ag giant took major issue with the fact that Seralini only used a small sample size of 10 rats to make his conclusions, and that the type of rats he had used had a natural tendency to develop tumors. And this constant barrage of criticism worked, leading the editor of the journal, Dr. Wallace Hayes, to retract the paper completely, claiming that the study's methodology meant that the results were inconclusive. It was a big blow to the advocates of a GMO-free food supply. And Monsanto's criticisms of the study may have held some water, except for one small detail. Monsanto conducted the exact same study on the exact same number and type of rats and published its findings in the exact same journal eight years before Seralini. The only difference between the two experiments is that while the Seralini study observed the rats over two years, Monsanto's study ended at 90 days when the rats were still healthy. Yet one study lives on in the journal for all of eternity and the other was delegated to the trash. Now, thankfully, 150 scientists all over the world condemned food and chemical toxicology for its decision, citing the disturbing level of monetary interests influencing the science. And as Dr. Michael Hansen, a senior scientist at Consumers Union and guest on this show, said last year, there's only three reasons to retract a paper. One, clear evidence that the findings are unreliable due to misconduct, that is, data fabrication or honest error. Two plagiarism or redundant publication. Three, unethical research. In the letter that the editor of Food and Chemical Toxicology, Dr. Wallace Hayes, sent to Dr. Seralini, they admitted that they found no problem with plagiarism, unethical research, or data fabrication. Now, thankfully, the work of these scientists to bring to light the disturbing story of the Seralini study has not gone unnoticed. In fact, after an extensive review process in which the paper passed no less than three rounds of peer reviews, the study was republished last month in the journal Environmental Sciences Europe. Dr. Michael Antonou, a molecular geneticist in London, even went as far as saying that, quote, few studies would survive such intense scrutiny by fellow scientists. The paper even went to great lengths to ensure every level of transparency possible by publishing the raw data associated with it something unheard of for Monsanto's GMO research. And if that weren't enough, Seralini takes the unusual step of providing a separate commentary on the conflicts of interests that led to the original retraction. He points out that mere months before the decision, Food and Chemical Toxicology hired a new assistant editor for biotechnology, Richard E. Goodman. Well, it just so happens that Richard E. Goodman worked at a certain multinational agrochemical company for seven years. You guessed it, Monsanto. Listen, it's one thing to launch a PR battle in defense of your product, but it's another thing entirely to allow politics to dictate science. This is a public health issue that people deserve to know. So while the findings of the study are definitely not something to be celebrated, the fact that Seralini and his team were able to overcome every corporate obstacle imaginable and republish this vitally important piece of research is a scientific victory for us all.